And welcome to Zoom into Bosco. We are blessed with 36 acres of an amazing campus. All right. Here for each other. The student life is amazing. Bosco helps you find your passion and maximize your potential. Well, at St. John Bosco High School, we have a four-year college preparatory curriculum where our graduation requirements are in line nearly every major university uh, you know, in the world. So the entrepreneurship pathway, intro to entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship. Their junior year is a dual enrollment course with Rio Hondo College, which is small business management and advertising and promotion. As an engineering pathway student, you're going to get solid engineering classes. You'll learn what it's like to actually work in an engineering setting. You're going to have a solid background in mathematics and sciences. Uh, with robotics, robotics is open to all students. The kids build everything. Esports right now is growing from the pro to the college level and now to high schools. Our lab here is state of the art. Anything you need to do in a video game with these computers, they can do it. We have six different pathways and one of my favorites is the biomed pathway. We have the most amazing tool, a virtual cadaver. So it's the same tool that's used at Stanford, at Cal Berkeley, at the Mayo Clinic to teach students about the way the body works. St. John Bosco, they learn more than just basic computer skills. They learn app design, game design, uh, just software engineering skills that they'll be able to translate to another uh, facet of their careers. If you are a, a musician and you want to be in the band, we have music production that has just begun and we have a hip-hop class, we have uh, visual arts, we have a film and media pathway, we have theater. The school does a good job. Bridge from the, the boy who's in seventh and eighth grade to the man who goes on to, to Yale, to Harvard, to Boston College, to UCLA. Uh, and I'd like to think our basketball program meets that, you know, the kind of the same criteria that our teachers do in the classroom, uh, that the other coaches do with their sports, that the arts do. I think that's the thing I'm most proud of about being here is just this is a place where everybody's trying to be great. I believe that there is no better place in the entire state of California than St. John Bosco High School. In sports medicine pathways, students learn how to deal with uh, different medical conditions and emergency situations, um, injury evaluations, planning, rehabilitation. St. John Bosco School is a place where they can learn about the values of God the values of church and the values of just being good human beings. And it's also a place where they make friends and it's called a brotherhood. What has stuck with me the most since my time as a student here and then now um, at this part of my career is my passion for learning was truly formed here. It wasn't just that I was loved, I truly knew that I was loved in this place. And that spirit still permeates these halls every day. Hello and good evening. This is Becky Ellison. I'm the Dean of Enrollment here at Bosco and I just wanted to be the first to welcome you. Welcome you to Zoom into Bosco. I'm the proud mother of a senior here at Bosco in the engineering pathway and a new freshman. And I can't wait to meet the new class of 2026. Before we get started tonight, I'd like to uh, briefly introduce a couple of the, the people that will be speaking tonight. Uh, Father Ted Montemayor, our director from Bosco, uh, Dr. Brian Wickstrom, our president and CEO, Dr. Chris Anderson, a proud grad of 04 and principal of Bosco, Mr. Edgar Salmingo, vice principal of academic affairs, Ms. Jen Snor, vice principal of student affairs, Mr. Michael Crawford, dean of admissions, myself and our newest member of the admissions team, Ms. Patty Lascano, uh, the admissions coordinator. So before we uh, do anything else, uh, as we always do at Bosco, we'd like to start in prayer. So I'd like to welcome Father Ted. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Let us uh, place ourselves, make ourselves aware of God's presence in our life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, Bless this special night and all those present.
Renew our minds for each mind and heart that fills the presence of this room. We thank you. Strengthen our confidence in who you have made us to be and ready us to make every moment count. St. John Bosco. St. John Bosco, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Ted. One little quick an announcement. If you would be so kind as to go ahead and go to the chat and um, throughout the night, just go ahead and introduce yourself to us. Make sure you put your name and your school and your grade so that we can reach back to you should you have any questions. Uh, you can also put any questions in the chat and we'd be happy to, to, uh, to answer them as quickly as possible. Uh, so with this, I would like to introduce to you uh, our president and CEO of St. John Bosco High School, Dr. Brian Wickstrom. Good evening, everybody. I'm excited to be here, excited to have all of you uh, join us. Um, I know Becky and Michael have put together a great program. I'm uh, starting my 16th month at St. John Bosco. As you can see from the picture, I have five kids. Uh, my oldest is a freshman at St. John Bosco this fall who, if you wonder if the school is doing a good job, I drop him off when I get here. I don't see him again till six o'clock at night. So he must be enjoying himself. And uh, I know he, he talks about the great friends he's already made and the exciting programs he's been a part. So our, our goal is to make sure that all of our, our boys come here, have a great experience. Uh, they wanna do athletics, focus on academics, just have them have a great student experience as we strive to make the school better to make a, a, a good school better. Um, so everybody gets a great experience from it and our, and our boys can go on with lifelong friends. And I'm excited to be a part of the future of St. John Bosco. And I think you're not gonna find a better, uh, better team to go through your four years of high school with than from starting with Father Ted all the way down the chain to everybody in our school is excited to help uh, bless and be a part of your children's growth. So now I'd like to introduce Dr. Chris Anderson, as mentioned before, he's a 2004 graduate and he's a Bosco alum, but he's, he's a very, very uh, on top of what's best for schools that we have. We're lucky he's been away from Bosco, came back and brought some great ideas and skill set with him. So now Dr. Chris Anderson. Thank you, Dr. Wickstrom, for introducing me uh, uh, again, as it's been alluded to, uh, I'm so glad uh, to be back at my alma mater, St. John Bosco High School. Um, as it was mentioned, uh, I'm a graduate class of 2004 um, from this great, this great school. And, and um, what is important to note, because I think it's a theme at our school, is this is actually my third stop at St. John Bosco in that obviously I was a graduate in 2004, uh, but beyond that, I uh, also did my student teaching at St. John Bosco High School as well. So my formative years as an educator uh, were really cemented at St. John Bosco High School. And then it's just you know, the way things work out and you'll hear again, a constant theme, whether it's in this presentation or if you attend our open house or any other admissions events, uh, this place keeps calling you back. And so I'm so proud. This is my first, first year as principal at St. John Bosco High School. And I'm so glad um, to be back home. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But before we really um, get into this, I did kind of want to um, share a little bit about the program tonight in that you're going to hear a lot about, the, uh, about Don Bosco's oratory model. And it, it, it is kind of the formative traits of, of what creates our educative system in that when we are educating young people, we strive to create um, not just a school, but a home, a school, a church, and a playground. Um, so uh, the hallmark of a Salesian school and specifically and especially St. John Bosco High School is uh, we, every program we have, again, whether it's academic, co-curricular, whatever it might be, we strive to implement that oratory model. And it's because it takes us back to that original Salesian experience, going all the way back to when Don Bosco first started his mission. Um, it, it is really, is the, it's the hallmark of the charism or the gifts that ultimately um, create our school. Um, so again, it, when we are trying to create an educational experience for young men, uh, it really grounds us because ultimately what we're trying to do 
is create an educational experience that is both timely, but also timeless. And so it really allows us to ensure that we are able to uh, provide that experience to our young people. Um, so again, just to talk about this, these, this oratory educational experience, uh, it is our way as Salesians to uh, create a model uh, of education for them. It allows us to make sure that we are creating a Eucharistic community where we're able to recognize that at the heart of all of this, at the heart of all we're doing, we're creating a community in God's love. Um, it allows us to make sure that we're creating an experience where the young people are really the center of what we do because at the end of the day, we wouldn't be a school if our young people weren't at the heart of it. And so that is constantly anything we plan, any type of program that we strive to create, um, we are putting the young people at the center of that. We are striving to make sure that there is a family spirit, that there is a culture of respect, of trust, of mutual love, um, so that whether uh, you are a parent, you're an administrator, a faculty, staff member, and of course, student, that that family spirit, that familiar spirit, and we'll talk about the brotherhood later, um, that family spirit's at the end of it. And then ultimately, what we're really striving for is to create an educational experience where transformation is at the center of it. Where um, you heard Mr. Cordero, if you were able to listen to our uh, admissions video here at the beginning of this, where he specifically said that line of um, young men who are those seventh or eighth graders, and then they come to us, they come to St. John Bosco High School, and they are able to transform into the best versions of themselves. And that's really the, at the heart of what we do. And so tonight, what we wanted to share with you is that oratory model. Again, there's a lot more um, to go into, in, at least in terms of specifics of our school, but at the heart of what we do is that oratory, which is a church, a home, a school, and a playground. And so the first thing that I wanted to talk to you tonight before we go into some other aspects of this is that, that first um, part of that oratory model, the home. And so one thing that I want you all to know is that when a young man comes through our school, um, he will experience a home. It's a place to belong, regardless of what his talents take him to or what his aspirations take him to. Um, St. John Bosco High School is going to be a place where he finds his passion, where he's going to know that it is safe to explore whatever it might be um, that, that uh, might be he might find his passion. He might find his welcoming path. Um, as it says here on the slide, it's evident of that. We have 115 different middle schools that are in one form or fashion um, uh, part, that we're partnering with to come into our school. And so we strive much in the same way of Don Bosco in the 19th century to create a place where all are welcome, all young men are able to come to our school regardless of their background where they can find that home. They can find that place of safety of welcomeness. Um, in addition to that, international students as well. So again, we are creating a place, we are striving to create a place where all young men can find a place of safety. Um, touched on it a little bit um, and I, can speak to this personally in the fact that one of the hallmarks of St. John Bosco High School is the brotherhood that's created. There's a deep camaraderie. Some of my best friends to this day are uh, some of the people that were in my class in the class of 2004, still to this day. There is this strong supportive friendship that is created in this space and we strive to continue to support that. Um, I think another important piece of demonstrating this home. We have over 25 faculty and staff that are alums. Again, uh, we just keep getting called back to this place and it is a beautiful thing that that is happening. I alluded to it a minute ago, uh, the family spirit. Um, 
everything we do, whether it is in activities, whether it is in athletics, whatever it might be, we wanna create a culture of trust and mutual respect that uh, parents are the primary educators. We believe that as Catholics, but at the same time, partnering together, we can truly create a familial spirit where we ultimately can lead to a truly transformational educational experience for young men. And so when we talk about creating a home, we want to create that place where students, their families feel welcome to be able to take part in that experience. My favorite example of uh, the home is uh, we call it much, it, it, I've been talking about the oratory experience. We literally call it the oratory uh, at St. John Bosco High School. I love going in there either before or after school. And really the, the, the purpose of this space, it is literally a physical space on campus, but we, uh, we use it to be a safe haven for our students. Um, tutoring can take place in there. There are games and activities set up uh, I'll be honest, just, just this afternoon before I left for home, um, I was playing ping pong with a young man. Again, it is, it is just a place where um, students can go and feel safe while either they might be waiting to be picked up or just to, to spend time with their friends. Um, and really my last thought when I wanna talk about a home is, is uh, in my time as an educator, I've worked with, with plenty of tremendous faculty, tremendous educators that uh, do whatever they can to make sure that the young people that they're supporting have a tremendous experience. Um, and, uh, not only seen at St. John Bosco High School, but one thing I think that separates St. John Bosco High School and really uh, our Salesian charism is it's literally part of our mission. We are called by Don Bosco himself to accompany students. You will hear that word accompany frequently should you choose to send your son to St. John Bosco High School because it is part of our ultimate call as educators, as Salesian educators, that we aren't just there to be with students. We need, they need to know that they are there with us. Again, um, in watching the, our admissions video, um, I, I thought it was really important to include that line of it's not important to love students. What is more important is to make sure that they know they are loved. And that is what's going to happen should you choose to send your son to St. John Bosco High School is he will know at the end of his four years that there was not just one or two, but you had an entire community that was behind your back and wanted not just what's best for you, but is going to help you get to where um, you are meant to be. And so with that, um, just one point of that home, uh, that first hallmark point of the oratory. I now want to introduce Mr. Salmingo, our Vice Principal of Academic Affairs, as he's going to tell you a little bit more about that second piece of the oratory, uh, which is school. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Uh, my, like he said, my name is uh, Edgar Salmingo, Jr. I'm the Vice Principal of Academic Affairs at St. John Bosco High School. I'm just truly humbled and honored that there's so many of you that are here this evening. I know it's over Zoom. Uh, but just to see, like, as you put in the chat, like all the places that you're coming from, it's just so humbling to know that so many people are interested in our school and we're happy to share our excitement with you this evening. Uh, as you can see on the slide, I, I want to talk about uh, the, the school aspect of the oratory model uh, that Dr. Anderson mentioned. Uh, obviously, if you're selecting a, a school, there are many options for you to choose from. And so we want to spend a little bit of time just to share a little bit what makes St. John Bosco's uh, version of school a little bit different than other options that you may be choosing from. Uh, the first bullet point you can see there is A through G requirements. Uh, unless you have a son that's in high school or that's in college or other uh, kids that are in that, uh, in that era of their lives, you may not be familiar with A through G requirements. A through G requirements are a set of courses that students uh, must take in order to be able to apply uh, specifically for UC and Cal State schools, but all universities across the country and so that you know, St. John Bosco High School's graduation requirements exceed the A through G requirements. So any student who graduates with a Bosco diploma is eligible, is, is possibly uh, uh, is a possible applicant for any university across the country. And so that when you're sending your son or if you're coming to St. John Bosco, you know that your diploma is worth enough to get you to one of these top 
uh, elite universities or any university that you'd like to attend. Second, you see here we have 21 AP and 10 honors courses. So depending on your level or what you're expecting or what you're looking for in terms of rigor and courses, we do have uh, the top end uh, taken care of. So we start off with some honors classes even as young as freshman year. Uh, if your son is, or if you or your son is very advanced and would like to take advanced classes right away, we do have that at the freshman level. And we also have AP level courses all the way at the, at the end at the senior level uh, for students to take as well. From as you know, from Spanish to computer science to English, uh, all essentially all the major AP courses are offered at Saint John Bosco. Third, and we'll talk about that uh, later. But we have six academic pathways, and uh, you know when we interview people, when we talk about uh, with teachers and graduates, and they say like, what's the what's your favorite part about academic uh, the academics at Saint John Bosco? A lot of them will talk about the pathways, and we'll get to that in, a, in another slide. Fourth, we have dual enrollment courses, and so being a college preparatory school. Obviously, uh, our goal and our design is to make sure that your sons are uh, eligible to apply to colleges, but also uh, like have an enhanced application. So when they're competing with other students from other schools to these very competitive colleges, uh, they have something that sets them apart. One of those is that we offer is called dual enrollment classes. These are courses that are offered on our campus, taught by our teachers, that students get automatic college credit uh, through a community college that is transferable to the UC and Cal State system. And so I know some of you are familiar with AP courses. AP courses, when you take them, you have to take a test. And if you get a passing score on that test, and if the school that you're going to, you know, chooses to accept that credit, uh, you get college credit. Um, but it's very much dependent upon the score that you have and the school that you're applying to. These dual enrollment courses, you automatically get college credit no matter, you know, no matter what you score, no matter what school you're going to in the California state system you get automatically college credit. Uh, primarily those courses are in engineering, entrepreneurship, and um, uh, our sports medicine pathways. So there are a few different courses that students take and they automatically get college credit. Uh, on that fourth bullet point, you see internships. And again, carrying on about academic pathways, there are two that I know of and even more that are growing, but our biomedical science pathway and our, uh, sorry, and our engineering pathways are two pathways where seniors actually get the opportunity to go out into different organizations. The biomedical science are pre-COVID. They're part of a program called the COPE Health Scholars. And so they volunteered, uh, they have tons of volunteer hours at many local hospitals. And our engineering pathway, we had partnered with Pelican Products, which is in Torrance, California. And they had a summer internship where students were uh, tasked to basically redesign a product that could be used or actually used for sale. Um, and so they were, they spent a whole summer actually working with the marketing department, with engineering departments to make sure that they put together a product that could be suitable for sale. Uh, we also have other internship opportunities, our sports med pathway. The seniors do internships with our own sports programs. They've worked in the past with Cal State Long Beach, with Rio Hondo. So just know that there's opportunities even at the high school level, which is very impressive to get internship hours uh, at their age. Fifth, uh, co-curricular teams. You know, I, I'm very much biased because I am our school's academic decathlon coach. And so one of the co-curricular teams that we offer is, is that program along with robotics. Uh, but you can see here in the picture, uh, this is when we traveled to Manila. We took 20 boys uh, pre-COVID. Um, you know, crazy as it sounds to take 20 teenage boys to another country, um, but we made it back safely. All 20 came back. Uh, but not only did we come back safe, we also came back, as you can see, a lot of medals. You know, one of our teams placed uh, in the top 10% of the world. Uh, we represented not only St. John Bosco, but the country. So we were Team USA, uh, representing the United States of America. Uh, and it was very nice to compete against 50 other countries. And it felt like the Olympics of academics. And so, again, if your son is interested in academics, uh, I know athletics is a big priority of our school and it does very, very well. But I also want to say that there's experiences and opportunities available also if academics is more something they would like to be interested in. And lastly, we'll go through this in another slide, but we also have a robust college counseling program. And we'll talk a little bit about what they provide for you and your sons as well. So on the, on the next slide, um, I talked about it very briefly, but we do have six academic pathways. If you're not familiar with academic pathways, they're very similar to majors in college where students get to take four years uh, of specialized courses in that area or career path that they would like to take. So the six are biomedical, computer science, engineering, entrepreneurship, our newest one, which is film and media arts, and sports medicine. 
so uh, there's a, a lot of details. I know it's uh, some of you will be getting uh, a brochure or be looking at some of our material to have more details about what courses they're taking or what specific uh, items that they do in the pathways. But I will say, as you see through these pictures here, the emphasis is pretty much doing a hands-on uh, you know, experience that students get to feel like they're prepared for the next level. So biomedical, you may have seen it in the video, uh, you know, them getting to use a, a 3D virtual cadaver, but also like, again, they're doing internship hours. Um, computer science, we have a, a newly built lab that students are coding. We have our curriculum that's in line with, uh, that's sponsored by and in line with Amazon. Uh, we have engineering where students are, are building, entrepreneurship, which is our business pathway. Uh, in this pathway, uh, one of the unique experiences that they have, if your son is interested in business, is they compete in a program with UCLA. And this last two years, uh, you know, even though it was COVID, we had one back-to-back -back first place overall uh, compared to all the schools that were submitting business plans. And they felt like a, a team from Bosco had the best business plan that was viable amongst all the different schools that put in a, 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 a submitted a business plan. Um, we have film and media arts. And then lastly, sports medicine. Uh, you can see a little picture there of some of the things that they do in sports medicine. Uh, I know it's one of our more popular pathways because it has sports in it. So a lot of people who are in sports are like, oh, I want to do sports medicine. Uh, but students really do get a really awesome experience doing uh, you know, injury evaluation and doing all these things. Uh, all six of these pathways are extra classes. They're electives. And so a student that really wants to be a doctor, let's just say, they get four years of intense college preparatory or AP science classes, which is invaluable. And when you apply to colleges and you say, I want to be in a pre-med program, to say that you already had internship hours and four years of coursework uh, before you even get into college uh, is incredible preparation for whatever they see in the next level. So all six of these are some of our, our, our star academic programs, uh, but hopefully you don't have to choose one, but a, a very good, if not half, if not more of our students decide to enroll in the pathway and they feel very much prepared for the next level. And then on the next slide, uh, we do have, like I mentioned, a, 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 ro a robust counseling program. Uh, our counselors, we have four, uh, one lead and three uh, in addition to our lead uh, counselors. Not only do they provide college counseling, but they also do guidance, they do social emotional counseling. And so you have a particular, each student gets their own person that's whose job is to invest and to feel like your son is like the most important, th most important thing to them to make sure that they're successful academically mentally and physically, and also like ready for the next level when they start applying to colleges. So you can see here some of the things that are, are good highlights of our academic counseling program. Our first bullet point, we do have colleges that come to on campus. Again, not as much now, but previously pre-COVID that came on campus. Uh, they're still coming on campus this year to meet with students, to tell them about what colleges that are available, what programs are available. So almost every day we have a college that comes by our campus to uh, share with any student that is interested some of the highlights of their school. Um, we do have trips, uh, so maybe it's not as easy for some students to be able to see all the colleges that are available out of the country. So we have had a spring break trip, you know, a California trip that's like, you know, either Northern California or Southern California, where they go on a bus and they get to explore all the colleges. And we recently had, uh, we've also had an East Coast tour where students go on these East Coast uh, colleges and get to experience what's out there as well with their, with their brothers, with their classmates to see what colleges are on the East Coast. Um, third, uh, there may be an opportunity where some of our students uh, have documented learning differences. And we did want to share with you that we do have what they call a support team education plan or STEP uh, for students who have uh, a documented learning differences. And so we do have uh, limited possibilities for students to get accommodations in the classroom if they've had um, any recommendations that's uh, documented. Fourth, we do have, um, you know, just wanted to, you know, to, to flaunt or to boast like how well our students have gone on to for, for college. 22 of the top, you know, over the past three years, our graduates have been accepted to 22 of the top 25 US News and World Reports National Universities, which is awesome. That includes five Ivy League schools. That includes three of the military service academies, which is, you know, every year we always have a student that goes off to West Point or the Air Force or Navy, uh, Naval Academy. So just know that, you know, if your son is on that track, we'll definitely put them on you know, the right path to make sure that they can achieve their goals. 20 plus students earn athletic scholarships, which is just nuts at other schools. It tends to be like you know 1% of the student body gets a, a full year, four year ride athletic scholarship, but because of 
uh, the clout of our athletic program. We've, we're very fortunate that to ex way surpass the average uh, high school uh, that gets athletic scholarships. 95% of our students are admitted to a four-year college or university. 40 plus students graduate with a GPA of 4.0 and above. And 25 uh, students, and we recognize this at graduation, are either AP scholars or get Hispanic uh, scholar recognition from the college board. So just know that our students are very much decorated as academics uh, in terms of where they go to college and also the honors and awards that they receive. And our last uh, slide is really not much to, I'm not gonna read all of them, but in case you want to know, you know where, where do students go? Where, what, what, kind of, what can I expect? Where, where are Bosco grads all over? Uh, you can see here, they're all over the country. Literally, we can go to any college, any major college in the United States, and we'll find either a, a, a current student or a grad that's there that will help, uh, that'll help you out. Uh, as I showed you in the picture, uh, our academic decathlon team travels for competitions. Uh, every year, we've, got, we've been invited to go to Yale University to, uh, to compete in the Tournament of Champions. And we are very fortunate that every one of those years, um, we go to Harvard Medical School because the dean is actually a Bosco grad. And he's always said like, hey, when you're in the area, when you're in town, come on over. I want to bring the boys and show them out. So even at Harvard Medical School, uh, the dean there is a Bosco grad. So literally all over the country, you'll be able to find it. And soon, uh, God willing, your son will join this illustrious group of colleges that uh, our, our braves are enrolled in. But I want to thank you for the time. I, I know it's a lot about academics, but I wanted to share that, you know, how excited we are. And again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, so that was the school portion. I know Dr. Anderson did home. I did school. The next one is church. So I want to introduce again our director, Father Ted, to talk about uh, a church or the church part of our oratory. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for being on this uh, the Zoom meeting. And uh, my name is Father Ted, as was mentioned. I'm the priest here on campus. I'm the director. And for us, the Salesian director in the spirit of St. John Bosco, the founder, of our religious order always felt that it was very important as a center of unity for the entire school. As been mentioned before, there are four pillars that uh, we base our oratory model on. One, we talked about home. And I think it's very important, we're gonna keep stressing that because St. John Bosco would often say that education is a matter of the heart. So while there's a lot of wonderful things, whether academic or sports, theater, and so forth, the heart is really the key. For our founder, St. John Bosco, this priest who lived and died in 1888, in the 1800s, loved young people, but he wanted really to reach their hearts. And when we talk about the oratory model, the four different pillars that we're talking about, they're attitudes more than buildings. So it's not so much a church building, although we do have a beautiful chapel, and for St. John Bosco, he wanted his chapel, his churches to be built in the center of the schools as much as possible so that everyone would have access to, to come to the chapel, as you see there, and, um, and to pray or spend some time in reflection. For us, when we say that it is church, it is faith-based curriculum. In other words, we believe in helping a young person learn more about himself. I love a phrase that Socrates has that says, an unexamined life is not worth living. So while we are a Catholic church and a Catholic order in a Catholic school, we do accept all people, especially all young people, because that was St. John Bosco's dream. And his goal is not to make everyone Catholic. His goal is to help each person to become a reflective person. He also had another phrase, Socrates, to find yourself, think for yourself. And this is what we do here at Bosco. We help the young man reflect deeper about his life and the values of his life. What's, what does it mean to live happily? How do you serve? It's not just about myself. How do we make a difference in the world? And it's also to help the young person to think, to think for themselves. St. John Bosco was this Catholic priest, had this mission to reach all of young people. And it's interesting because we might feel overwhelmed with all of what we're hearing. When St. John Bosco was asked, how do your schools run? He would simply say, come and see, come to our playground, come to our school and you will send something different. Yes, we are a Catholic school and we have wonderful things, but it's really that spirit of home, the spirit of respect, the spirit that God is present in the center of our lives. We, for example, start every day with prayer in the morning. 
And then there's a solution mission uh, message that is giving, given out to all the students. Every day we have a daily mass that's offered. It's optional, of course, it's at 720 in the morning, but there it is. If you'd like to come and, and be part of mass one morning, it's available to the young people. Then we have at least once a month, we have a school mass. We have retreats, as you can see in the slides. Uh, we have youth ministry programs and we have service outreach to those who are in need. And so there's a lot of elements. It's not again a church, a, a building, but really it's an attitude of how we live here at the Salesian Center, at this oratory at St. John Bosco. It's a home where all feel welcome, school where we learn about so many things and about life. It's a church where we learn to reflect and to make God the center of our lives. And there's a lot of different ways that we do this throughout the day and throughout the year. I am amazed as I deal with the young people here at St. John Bosco, I'm amazed at the depth of spirituality that these young men bring. Uh, many of them have gone to Catholic school, uh, grammar school, but junior high, but they really do bring um, a real depth of wanting to discover more about God. It makes our job easier uh, because we try to create that environment. And so that's the pillar of church, really, again, an attitude. It doesn't have to be a building. And the last pillar, I will turn it to Mrs. Schnorr, which is playground, which was very important for St. John Bosco. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for being here with us and taking time out of your busy day to join us here tonight. My name is Jen Schnorr. I am the Vice Principal of Student Affairs. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the playground, which as the name implies, it is a place to play. And that is what makes high school high school. That is, those are the memories that we create um, when we are in high school. And it is a place to have fun, and to experience joy and to, you know, to create those memories through laughter and through expressing our creativity. Um, at St. John Bosco, we have so many different opportunities for the boys for play. Um, and that doesn't mean running around at break and lunch outside, which they do, which is great, but we have athletics and theater and clubs, music, um, student government, so many different opportunities for them to, to be who they are and to grow into who they're going to become. Um, we obviously, our athletics program is very well known and it is something that um, is very popular at the school. Over 80% of our student body participates in athletics and we participate in over 13 CIF sanctioned sports. Um, but eight of those are non-cut sports, which means that we offer that opportunity. You do not have to be a five-star athlete to participate in sports. If this is something that you love, you have a place here at Bosco to participate in athletics. Um, we also have so many different clubs and organizations available on campus. We just got done with our club uh, fair in which we now have about almost 30 this year, 30 clubs that are all student driven, student developed. Um, if there is something that you are interested in, you can create your own club. You just need to find a moderator, an adult moderator, um, and you can create your own club. So there is virtually a club for anything that you might want to do. We have service clubs like the Leo's Club and Varsity Club that do service opportunities around the community. There are numerous um, honor societies, such as the Spanish Honor Society, uh, we have math honor societies um, that are nationally recognized and known. And then we also have interest groups, right? Interest clubs. So like I said, anything that the boys are interested in, whether it's a ping pong club or chess club, um, paintball, whatever it is, they can start their club, gather friends to join in the club and then start meetings and you know, having fun together. Um, we also have a wonderful ASB student government uh, we have a wonderful new moderator, our activities director named Mrs. Fernandez, Mrs. Myra Fernandez, and she has run the exec board um, as well as each class board. The ASB is something that is near and dear to my heart because I have been an activities director for many, many years, 
And I think it's kind of the heart of the school. Um, we love putting on different events. We have homecoming coming up at the end of this month. Um, and that is an entire week of fun and dress up days. We just got done last week with our fall spirits uh, week. So again, dress up days and fun games and rallies and big games like our football game against modern day. So these are all things that we love putting on throughout the school year. If you are interested in being a part of student government, we would love to have you come out because the more boys that we get into the mix, the better events that we can put on. Our visual and performing arts, our VAPA department is amazing. Um, we have a wonderful theater program who works very closely with our sister school, St. Joseph's. Um, and for all of the plays, both at St. Joseph's and Bosco, the students from both schools work together to create these wonderful productions that they put on for the communities of both schools and the community at large. We have a wonderful visual arts, um, including Brave Vision, which is um, basically our news periodical for the school. Um, Brave News, which is the, the newspaper as well. And then, like I mentioned, working together with our sister school, St. Joseph's, we put on events throughout the entire year, where it's, where it's rallies going from for each of our schools. Um, dances are done in collaboration with each individual school. And then each of the class events um, happen with both schools involved. So the freshman class social events, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and all dances we do together. So there are plenty of social interaction opportunities for the boys and girls to get to know each other and to, um, to grow as one school, both schools as one. So um, with that, I would like to pass it over to Mr. Mike Crawford to talk about the admissions process. Thank you very much. This, is, this would definitely be the moment where I would tell everybody to stand up, stretch your legs out, wherever you're sitting. Um, but definitely the Zoom world, um, hopefully uh, everyone's comfortable. We're coming towards the end here. Truly appreciate everyone's time for being on here. Um, and I am just going to walk you through if this is something you guys want to do, what the actual process looks like. So um, as you can see right here, uh, at the top left, our early commitment program is actually going on right now. And basically, um, it's for any families that feel uh, like this, if this is something you want to do, we would love to be able to get the process not only started with you, but actually finalized and finished um, going into Christmas break. Um, for our families that um, are still, you know, going through the process and, and checking out other schools and, and still uh, maybe even uh, are undecided, uh, the traditional uh, commitment process would be something that we would do with you uh, when we came back from Christmas break. Um, and so really, you know, wherever you're at, we want to be able to uh, meet you and, and then go through the process with you there. Um, I'm going to specifically start talking about early commitment, uh, just so everyone knows. Uh, you can see there's, there's actually a, a, a lot of similarities uh, that go on. Uh, we do have a couple benefits that I'll mention towards the end. Um, or I'll say the, the carrot that we like to dangle in front of you um, for the early commitment process. Uh, but the first thing is, is when you go online to submit your application, um, it is free right now. So through Halloween, uh, October 31st, will be the last uh, day uh, that that will be uh, eligible because uh, on November 1st, uh, the application to submit it uh, will uh, be $50 at the very end. Uh, to submit it. But for right now and uh, moving forward, like I said, it is free. So who doesn't like to say $50, right? Um, but as you do it, uh, that's not where it ends. And so I want to make sure that you guys know that is once you do submit your online application, we do not do paper uh, applications. So everything is online. Um, once you submit that, what you now have done is actually create what's called your school admin checklist. And basically what that is, is these requirements that are listed on the screen here. Um, these are the things that you will actually uh, use your username and your password that you had to submit to create your online application. That will be the same username and password to now log back in uh, to what is known as your school admin checklist. And when you log back in, you're going to see these things right here. 
um, the math, English, and principal recommendation, uh, what you'll do is right next to each one of them, you will click a button that will allow you to put that teacher or that principal's name uh, in there along with their email address. And then you'll hit send. And what that does is it sends them our form that we need filled out. And when they're done filling that out, they'll actually just submit it right back to us. So you will never see those. Um, so on our end, what we'll be able to see um, is if it's been submitted or not. And what's really cool is, so will you. You'll be able to always log back in and see on your checklist, things will automatically check off when they've come back in, which means we have received the math teacher's recommendation, the English teacher's recommendation, the principal's recommendation. Um, I know a lot of times uh, with certain families, uh, maybe it's a new principal, maybe your son just started at that school and you're worried that the principal doesn't really know your child. I do want you to know a lot of times for us uh, that the principal um, knows, you know, if they don't know the child uh, well enough, they will reach out to the people on campus uh, that do. Um, and a lot of times too for us, it's an opportunity to make sure um, as well if there's any disciplinary issues that we need to be aware of um, and know. Um, but just know um, that if you're in a situation like that, to please not worry um, that uh, the principals do a pretty good job of understanding what their role is in that scenario if they do not know the child, um, maybe as well as, as, as others uh, for whatever reason. Um, you can see the seventh and eighth grade transcript. Uh, we also understand you know, because of COVID, um, some testing didn't happen for different families at different schools. Uh, so if you do not have one from last year, um, please feel free to go back to the previous year. Um, also, I know for some families, even the previous year, they didn't have it. Um, if you're really worried, if we're going back too far, uh, just based off whatever your school did uh, when it comes to any standardized, uh, uh, or not uh, standardized testing, I apologize. I was talking about seventh and eighth grade transcripts, um, but on our standardized testing, um, please don't worry. You can reach out to us directly and just let us know. And we'll make a note on your son's file um, if your school um, just did not do any type of standardized testing. Um, the seventh and eighth grade transcript, uh, that is something that you will also um, be able to um, get from your school. And these are all things that you guys will upload. So just make sure you know um, in your school admin checklist, the standardized testing, you will actually upload that. You'll request that from your school and you'll upload that into your, trans, uh, into your school admin checklist. You'll see a little button there that says upload. Um, the seventh and eighth grade transcript, same exact thing. Um, you'll be able to, again, request that from your school. On your school admin checklist, there's a button that says upload, and you'll be able to put that in there as well. Um, we do actually um, ask, um, you know, if, if, if it's really tough and you're having issues, we get it. There's always, you know, technology um isn't uh, always the easiest and uh, i understand some of us uh, have uh, greater challenges with that than others um if uh, the worst case scenario is is that you have to drop off the paper copies at our front office um we can uh, definitely work around that and we can upload that on our end uh, into the system for you so uh, just so you know that part um for our uh, interviews uh, you'll be able to actually choose one of the nights that we're having them in november uh, that will also be in your school admin checklist, uh, you'll be able to uh, book that interview. You'll be able to see the three nights that we have available, um, and you can choose whichever night works best for you. And um, we will uh, definitely be able to accommodate uh, anything should, you know, things change and schedules change or sports or uh, just something comes up. Uh, we can uh, work around that for you. But that'll be something that you'll be able to choose the time slot that works best for you. Um, and you'll see those choices in November. Uh, the HSBT in January, um, that is something you'll also be able to sign up in your school admin checklist uh, right now. Uh, we just have to play it by ear, um, and uh, Dr. Anderson will let us know if that is something that we'll be able to do in person. Uh, last year, we did have to do the HSBT online, um, so we'll just have to go and see where we're at with all the COVID restrictions. Um, and so we have not uh, put that on the checklist yet uh, for a date. Um, as uh, we get closer to that, we will make sure that that is something that we let you know um, is on school admin for you to sign up for um, and let you know if we will be doing that in person or if we will be doing that online. All righty. Um, application, again, is free through October 31st. Um, one of the other benefits that you can see on there is a priority admission into the uh, pathways. So, again, if you're somebody that 
we've accepted into Bosco and then you register, um, you would be a part of our early commitment uh, program. Uh, and again, that's something we won't have finalized and finished going into Christmas break. Um, it does not mean that you are getting automatically into the pathways, but you will be a part of the first students that are looked at to uh, potentially receive admission into the pathway or pathways uh, that you apply for. Um, and then also a big one, and I cannot express this one enough. If you are a family that's going to be applying for tuition assistance um, to be uh, a part of the early commitment program, we'll put you as well in a situation where you were the first group of families that will be looked at and considered for tuition assistance. And um, I just cannot express that one enough. You know, um, I know it's super important. I am a financial aid kid. My mom needed tuition assistance back um, to send me to high school. Uh, and um, it's very important, uh, you know, for me to be able to be in this role and, and work with the different families as you guys go through this as well. Um, we never want anyone to miss out on coming to Bosco uh, due to finances. Um, and so we want to be able to do our best. And so the earlier you can get started with that process, uh, the better. Uh, we do need to let you know um, that we do not award any tuition assistance uh, to any families until they are an accepted student at Bosco. So um, if you do not go through the whole process um, from the application standpoint and uh, go through the process of um, the school admin checklist that I've walked over and, and get to the point where hopefully uh, we are accepting your son, um, you won't actually receive any tuition assistance until that process is taken care of first, just to give you guys a heads up on that one. All righty. So I'm going to move into the next slide, I believe. We're ready for that. One more time. Perfect. Uh, one of our biggest uh, scholarships that we have is the presidential uh, scholarship. And so I really wanted to make sure that you guys got to hear about this. Uh, this is uh, $20,000 over four years. This is a $5,000 scholarship uh, that is awarded uh, out to um, incoming freshmen. Uh, and this is something that if your son meets the criteria, you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen, um, what is gonna be asked uh, of your son. Um, if he does fall into this, and this is something you think that he would be eligible for, um, then definitely you wanna be a part of the early commitment process as well uh, for us. Um, but just know uh, it, is, it is definitely, it's always a tough one for us and, and the committee and the group of people that looks at each one of the applicants because uh, we have some absolute amazing young men. And so you can see there's some, uh, some young men right here uh, as part of our uh, graduating class last year that all decided to go to Cal Berkeley. Uh, and you've got a, a number of them were actually presidential scholarship winners um, and young men that uh, were able to uh, you know, start off uh, Bosco with $5,000 off of their tuition. And so this is something that, again, um, he needs to make sure that uh, he understands that this could be $20,000 over four years that you know he gets to save or you get to save. Um, but yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, if this is something that you think that your son is eligible for, uh, please feel free. You'll see it on our application. It's part of the actual online application. Um, you'll see if this is something you want to do, you would click it. And then um, some drop downs come down for different things you're going to need to fill out. Um, and ultimately, when you create your school admin checklist, you'll also be able to upload some of the items uh, that you can see here. Um, but ultimately, just let us know if you have any questions whatsoever, if this is not self-explanatory enough for you. And again, you will find this same information online when you fill out the actual online application for the school. It will be one of the choices on one of our pages um, that will just basically say yes or no if you want to apply. And if you hit yes, then you will see a multitude of different questions uh, pop up for you. Okay. So yes, uh, someone just asked a question. Are the transcripts the same as the report card? And yes, transcript is the report card. It's a good question. I have another person uh, just asked a question. Do the recommendations need to come from their current math and English teachers? Um, yes. Yes, please. All righty. Um, and definitely, please, uh, if you guys have questions, keep putting them in the chat, and we're going to hang out here uh, afterwards uh, to answer more questions. 
Uh, you can see the next slide that just popped up. Super excited about our open house uh, that is coming up here on Sunday, October 17th. Uh, it'll be on campus. And this is something that you can RSVP for. If you go to Bosco.org admissions back, backslash admissions, uh, you'll be able to see under events on our page uh, that you can sign up and RSVP for our open house, which will be in person on campus. And I can't say it enough. It's super exciting to have in-person events again. So um, Sunday, October 17th from 11 to 2 p.m. Uh, we'd love to be able to have you with us on that day. Um, if you're not able to make it that day, uh, we can definitely set something up um, for a future uh, event, whether that be a tour um, or the following Wednesday, October 20th, we actually have our Academic Pathways Night, which will also be on campus. If that's something that you're interested in coming to, love to have you at that event as well. Um, but definitely want to promote our open house, which is coming up here on Sunday, October 17th. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to Mrs. Becky Ellison to close us out. And like I said before, uh, we're going to hang on here and stay to answer any questions that anyone might have. And again, can't thank you enough for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, Mr. Crawford, I just wanted to thank everyone for being here tonight. It's been a very special night for us, um, getting to share all of those wonderful things about Bosco. Um, this is the start. This is the beginning of the admission season. Uh, one thing that we really loved doing last year is that we were able to see everything via Zoom um, once a week throughout this admissions department, this admission season. So we are here. We will, um, we see you tonight. We will have open house. We will also have academic pathway night um, and then another virtual night to answer any other questions you might have. Along the way, we hope to see all your sons in their eighth grade classrooms as we go out and visit. And um, if I can say one thing, it's that we're here for you, Ms. Lascano, Mr. Crawford, and myself uh, throughout this whole uh, process. So we will continue to look at the chat and questions, but we just wanna wish you a wonderful night. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. I am going to answer some of the questions that we have here, uh, just in case anyone wants to hear them uh, as I'm going through them. And uh, Mrs. Ellison, feel free to chime in if I'm missing anything. Uh, one question was, do the recommendations need to come from their current math and English teachers? Yes, um, I believe I answered that one already. If you do feel like there's something missing though, if you feel like at any point in time, um, if you don't feel like they're going to give the proper information, um, just just let us know. Contact us and fill us in on what the story is. Uh, and like I said, uh, you know we can always add stuff to their file and make notes. Um, I have another question in here: Are the interviews held in person? Yes. So hopefully uh, nothing changes with that. But we are planning on having our interviews in person. Um, what do we do if the eighth grade report cards are not available yet? Uh, no worries. Go ahead and get that seventh grade. Um, and whatever they can give us with any current eighth grade grades would be great. Um, but we also understand that we're not going to see the full picture until down the road. Uh, so please don't stress over that. Um, uh, yes. Can we submit the application and submit recommendations later? Is teachers wish to hold that until November? Um, yes, by all means, submit the application because that actually just gets the process started. Um, you can't submit any recommendations until you actually submit an application. So definitely do that part. Um, the recommendations, like I was saying before, uh, you'll see on your checklist next to math, English, and principal um, that you'll be able to then manage that. So you'll click a button next to the math teacher and then say first name, last name, email. You'll put that information in, hit send. So you'll never actually see a form. It'll just get sent to them. They'll see it in their email and then they'll click a button on their side and then our form pops up. They'll fill it out. When they hit send, it comes directly back to me, uh, to all of us, I should say. Um, and so all you will see is a checklist. You'll see a check mark on your checklist, letting you know that the math teacher returned it back to us. If it's not been checked, then that means that we still have not received it yet. Um, so yes, and if we have to wait till November, that is fine. Uh, we can we can deal with that. Uh, do you have to choose a pathway the first year 
a bit confused about that as I don't know if we want to commit to a career path that soon. Just because I have, I know the answer to this, but Mr. Salmingo, you're on here. Might as well you, utilize this since you're on here. Do you want to answer that? Do you have to yeah. choose a pathway the first year? Yeah, you, you, do not have to change, uh, you do not have to choose an academic pathway your first year. If you want to do it later on, uh, you could set up for a pathway later on in your career. If you choose one, uh, your first year and after the first year is like, hey, this isn't for me. Obviously, these kids are 13, 14 year olds trying to make a decision for their careers. And it's very common for students to change their mind. They could also change their mind if after they select the pathway after their freshman year. Awesome. Um, are there shadow days available? Um, right now, uh, we are not able to uh, have any shadow days, although um, we are hosting tours on campus every single day. Mrs. Patty Lascano is leading that for us. Um, and also, uh, Mrs. Ellison, uh, uh, the date I'm blanking right now, our date coming up where we are going to have a big Brafer Day is November 19th. November 19th. So that is something that you'll be able to RSVP for coming up here soon uh, for us. Uh, we're going to basically have a big shadow day uh, um, where it's more probably more of an event on campus than what a typical shadow day has looked like in the past. So. Uh, we will see. Um, this this world's been very fluid, so we're just kind of rolling with punches as they come. Um, if we're able to host Shadow Days again, uh, we will definitely start marketing it and pushing it out there because, of course, we would love to have kids on campus uh, to be able to see what it truly is like to be a brave for a day. Um, dun, 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 dun. Uh, looks like we've got some of these answered. Um, I'm typing away. Go, yep, you're doing a great job. Sorry. Uh, someone's asking about open house. Is the best is plan the, plan for the 11 a.m. start or is it a come and go event? Um, we actually will have it uh, planned out. If you're able to be here um, at 11 a.m., um, you'll you'll see uh, that the itinerary uh, is filled uh, for you to be able to experience something different as the day goes on. Um, but we also understand uh, that uh, you know sports and club teams and life in general could uh, maybe make you late or take you away early. So uh, we want to be able to try to do as much as we can and also have potentially some repeat um, opportunities for you um, just in case you do have to leave early or if you come late um, or if you're able to stay the whole time. We also have it set up to where you'll be able to experience different things on campus um, if you're able to be with us the whole time. So I mean, when Carlos comes, he says, no phone. Okay, somebody uh, unmuted, it's all good. Um, uh, uh, if, if somebody doesn't know your son, uh, again, um, the, the teachers uh, from the personal standpoint uh, do a pretty good job um, of reaching out and touching base with other teachers on campus um, that hopefully do have a better understanding of your son. And so just know the teachers do a pretty good job of that. Um, but for the most part as well, they're giving us insight on how they are as an English student, as a math student. So um, just know from that standpoint, again, even if it's, you know, it's still early in the year, so we totally understand that, but they do a good job of understanding that they can talk to the math teacher from last year or the English teacher from last year or in the case that those people are gone as well for whatever reason, the teachers all do a really good job of understanding that they can still give us insight on the student with what we're asking on our forms, um, even if they don't know them uh, because they've been with them for a long time. Um, so just know uh, the teachers do a pretty good job there. But again, like I said before, if you're ever worried about it, just, just email us or call us and we'll just add a note uh, to his file. Uh, which we can do on our end, uh, just just in case, you know, we need to have more information in there. All righty. Mrs. Ellison, been doing a great job here, it looks like. Answering I haven't up. been able to answer questions because I was on the, the presentation, so trying to type as fast as possible. No worries. Um, I'm going to, I, I believe that I answered everyone else. If your question did not get answered, please feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself right now and ask a question or 
If you don't want to do that, feel free to keep writing questions here in the chat. Um, but I believe we've answered from what I can tell. I believe we've answered everything that's in the chat. So, um, I just want to confirm. Free. I just want to confirm, Ms. Rafford. Yeah. Okay, so on the report cards, uh, I sent the seventh, uh, the one from last year. Okay. And if they get the first quarter, like the first quarter of, uh, we can submit those, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. We'll ultimately be getting everything. So mm -hmm. we know that, you know, um, if all of a sudden your son doesn't do really well towards the end of the year, um, we'll get that information. So we'll know, you know, uh, we just didn't want to be able to see where he's at right now, you know, and then hopefully we can see where he was at in seventh grade and just currently at. And again, I understand if anyone was you know, the COVID world or the Zoom world or the not in class online world, you know, didn't do any favors to a lot of kids. So um, just, just communicate with us is all we ask if, if you're concerned and you're worried that, you know, we're going to look at a piece of paper and you don't feel like it's going to tell the true story of your son. So I would just say, just, just talk to us. Just fill us in. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. I do see a very special person, Mrs. Patty Lascano. She turned her camera on. I don't know, uh, just because we have people here. I don't know if if, if uh, you want to unmute or not and say hi to everybody, but this is our new admissions coordinator, Mrs. Patty Lascano, and she is absolutely amazing. She is also um, your best friend through this process. <laughs> She's the she's the she's the first person that will answer the phone calls for anybody that is looking to get uh, any information or if you need any help with your online application or just this process or if you want to set up a tour or if you just want to talk. <laughs> well, but, thanks, Mike, and, and it's so great to see everybody here on Zoom tonight. I know I've spoken with a few of you, so uh, my call me, email me, no questions, a silly question. I'd love to help you through this process, give you a campus tour. So we're excited that you're checking out Bosco. I appreciate it. Mrs. Ellison, are you, are you able to type or uh, add uh, Patty's contact information down there in the chat? Just I sure can. So for any of you guys that are on here. We'll have that for you. And I, I, we've been on enough of these Zooms now for a while, so I don't want to make anybody go through the awkward Zoom silence. Um, but so um, if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself um, and ask that question or put it in the chat. If, we, if nobody has anything else, I don't want to keep people on here for no reason. So. Um, Mr. Crawford, why don't we end yeah. the video just in case someone else didn't see it? Sounds great. Okay, so I'll start the video again and then we'll we'll end the night. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are blessed with 36 acres of an amazing campus. Everyone cheers for each other. The student life is amazing. Bosco helps you find your passion and maximize your potential. Well, at St. John Bosco High School, we have a four-year college preparatory curriculum where our graduation requirements are in line nearly every major university uh, you know, in the world. So the entrepreneurship pathway, intro to entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship, their junior year is a dual enrollment course with Rio Hondo College, which is small business management and advertising and promotion. As an engineering pathway student, you're gonna get solid engineering classes. You'll learn what it's like to actually work in an engineering setting. You're going to have a solid ma background in mathematics and sciences. Uh, with robotics, robotics is open to all students. The kids build everything. 
eSports right now is growing from the pro to the college level and now to high schools. Our lab here is state of the art. Anything you need to do in a video game with these computers, they can do it. We have six different pathways and one of my favorites is the biomed pathway. We have the most amazing tool, a virtual cadaver. So it's the same tool that's used at Stanford, at Cal Berkeley, at the Mayo Clinic to teach students about the way the body works. St. John Bosco, they learn more than just basic computer skills. They learn app design, game design, uh, just software engineering skills that they'll be able to translate to another uh, facet of their careers. If you are a, a musician and you want to be in the band, we have music production that has just begun and we have a hip-hop class. We have uh, visual arts. We have a film and media pathway. We have theater. The school does a good job of being a bridge, a bridge from the, the boy who's in seventh and eighth grade to the man who goes on to, to Yale, to Harvard, to Boston College, to UCLA. Uh, and I'd like to think our basketball program meets that, you know, the kind of the same criteria that our teachers do in the classroom, uh, that the other coaches do with their sports, that the arts do. I think that's the thing I'm most proud of about being here is just this is a place where everybody's trying to be great. I believe that there is no better place in the entire state of California than St. John Bosco High School. In sports medicine pathways, students learn how to deal with uh, different medical conditions and emergency situations, um, injury evaluations, planning, rehabilitation. St. John Bosco School is a place where they can learn about the values of God the values of church and the values of just being good human beings. And it's also a place where they make friends and it's called a brotherhood. What has stuck with me the most since my time as a student here and then now um, at this part of my career is my passion for learning was truly formed here. It wasn't just that I was loved, I truly knew that I was loved in this place. And that spirit still permeates these halls every day. Alrighty. I think we're finished, yes. Well, if anyone else, I know we still have some people on here before we say goodbye. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, I just wanted to get the contact for an admissions um person just to have. I'm not gonna be one of those crazy people that calls your office though. <laughs> I Patty, you're on mute. Patty, you're on mute. Patty, you're on mute. Hi, Doris. This is Patty Lascano. I actually got your inquiry for a campus tour. I was going to reach out to you. Oh, so, hey, Patty. <laughs> hi. You can call me directly. Um, my number is 714 276 2342, or you can reach me at plascano at bosco.org. plascano at Bosco. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You are more than welcome. And great um, presentation, you guys. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye.